Hi, I'm Stephen Dixon. I am a pharmacist and I've been working with the LDN Research Trust for over a decade and dispensing LDN to tens of thousands of patients in the EU and the UK. I have the honour of uh, writing the first chapter of the third LDN book, Chapter 1, Pharmacology and Best Clinical Practices. Now this chapter will give you an overview of the pharmacology, that is how the drug works, which receptors it works on and what that actually means for the body and how it improves health in certain conditions, and also how clinicians should best use it in their patient group. Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Livingood, and I've written a chapter for the LDN Research Trust called Drug Resistant Depression. Whether you are a healthcare provider or a loved one of someone experiencing chronic depression, I know you will find some fascinating new research about the different causes of depression and why conventional medications don't always work. Did you know only 28% of patients respond to monotherapy for antidepressant medications? That means almost three-fourths of patients don't respond. The clues as to why people do not respond to medications lie in a thorough family history, a personal health history, and specific medical tests. We'll review how you can run a few of these tests and predict if a person will actually respond to an SSRI. You'll be prepped with questions to ask your doctor if you're a patient, or if you're a doctor, questions that you really need to ask your patients. We'll explore trauma, insomnia, lifestyle habits, dysbiosis, menopause, and so much more. Join me in learning more in the LDN book number three. I'm Dr. Sarah Zielsdorf, an internist, microbiologist, medical advisor, and the education director for the LDN Research Trust. I'm an author in the LDN book three for chapter three, treating virally damaged tissues with LDN. Profound cellular injury occurs due to a severe case of COVID-19. As the central component, we have DNA damage that can occur. Viral illnesses lead to viral toxemia. COVID-19 often causes reactivation of dormant viruses, including herpes simplex virus 1 and 2, Epstein-Barr virus, varicella zoster, and parvovirus B19. Injury to gut and pulmonary tissues lead to polymicrobial sepsis. Hyperactivation of toll-like receptors leads to cytokine storm. Attenuating toll-like receptor 4 is central for treating COVID. The targets are the gut and lung tissues. LDN is the most well-studied and well-established attenuator of multiple toll-like receptors. Hi, my name is Yusuf Salibi, otherwise known as J.P. Salibi. I am a functional medicine physician and a director of the Carolina Holistic Medicine Centers in South Carolina, as well as our nonprofit Priority Health Academy, which is a teaching institution for functional medicine practitioners. I have the privilege of serving on the LDN Research Trust Medical Advisory Board. Uh, Linda Elzegood had tasked me with writing a chapter on longevity. This is a very broad topic. I am discussing LDN as a standalone therapy or in conjunction with other agents for increasing longevity and health span. This can impact such conditions as autoimmune disease, immune dysregulation, mood disorder, and cancer, amongst others. I am Dr. Deanna Windham, and thank you for joining me in the chapter called An Integrative Approach to Mixed Connective Tissue Disease. This is a complicated disease process that is difficult to make the diagnosis for clinicians and difficult to live with for patients. But in this chapter, we're going to talk about how to nail the diagnosis every time so that you never miss it again. We're also going to talk about some exciting new treatment options and what we can do to help people with mixed connective tissue disease to live vibrant and healthy lives. We're also going to highlight LDN or low-dose naltrexone and how it works specific to mixed connective tissue disease and some of my experience with it. I'm excited to have you join us in the chapter and I hope that you get a lot out of it. 
I'm Dr. Kent Holtorf with the Holtorf Medical Group and founder of Integrative Peptides and Chief Science Officer of KJ Biofarm. I wrote Chapter 6, LDN and Mold Illness and the Updated Peptide Protocol for the Rapid Treatment of Sears or Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. The chapter builds on the current standard protocol and demonstrates that the focus on immune modulators such as LDN and peptides can dramatically and much more quickly get these patients better because as explained in the chapter, Sears is fundamentally an illness of the immune system that results in a vicious cycle of the the multi-system illness that it is. Well, the current protocol for mold illness and subsequent Sears indirectly treats the abnormal immunity. It's actually the last thing to be significantly addressed. So this is what needs to be done initially, making it much easier for every other physiologic abnormality and associated symptom to be able to normalize. It makes it much easier to get better and uh, with all these multi-system physiological abnormalities. So this chapter will basically demonstrate how to get better, faster, and easier. If you miss the immune dysfunction, you're likely in for a long, protracted treatment, and it allows you to limit your suffering or for those of your loved ones and allow you to able to return to normal functioning much quicker. My name is Sebastian Dennison. The chapter that I contributed to looked at the use of LDN in the eye for both providers and patients and its use in helping control inflammation and helping with post-surgical and trauma healing. This is an exciting chapter because we're looking at the evidence over the last 15 years and how it contributes to the utilization in, in a safe and potentially effective manner. I'm Angus Dalgleish, Professor of Oncology at St George's University of London and Principal of the Institute of Cancer Vaccines and Immunotherapy. And I have written uh, Chapter 8 on the effects of long, uh, low-dose naltrexone and long COVID. I also have written the next chapter, which is on the use of long, uh, low-dose naltrexone and cancer. And these are actually quite linked, as we found one of the mechanisms that LDN operates through that probably explains why it is so effective in cancer is shared with patients who develop long COVID. And that is the inflammatory pathway that leads to the production of interleukin-6, which is the hallmark of uh, cancers that progress, but is also a hallmark of acute and long COVID. In this chapter, we discuss the possible mechanisms, but even more importantly, the fact that giving patients uh, a low-dose naltrexone who've suffered long, uh, long COVID for over a year has led to dramatic improvements in their symptoms. Sometimes it really is dramatic in two or three weeks. Other times it takes slightly longer. And we know that the link is real because if you withdraw the low-dose naltrexone too early, they relapse reintroduce it and they benefit again. So I think you will find the uh, use of the low-dose naltrexone in long COVID patients and their remarkable recoveries really most interesting and I am surprised it has not become a standard of care. I have written chapter 9 about the role of low-dose naltrexone in cancer patients. I did not read or learn of LDN and cancer from any other source than asking patients who were doing remarkably well if they were taking anything else. It was this was how I learned that some cancers seem to stabilise with low-dose naltrexone. And in this chapter, I not only uh, go through the mechanisms we now know, that there are at least three major scientific pathways that naltrexone inhibits that are related to cancer, but also several remarkable anecdotes, which I'm sure you will find of great interest. And I have an absolute privilege and honor to join other incredible influential colleagues and mentors of mine in sharing wisdom of how Lotus Naltrexone has impacted our lives, both personally and professionally. And I'm part of a chapter where I get to splash around and sharing with you some of the really amazing cases that 
blew me away in my approach to cancer care. And so I hope that you have some curiosity to dig deeper into some cases of where low-dose naltrexone made all the difference in patients dealing with cancer.